Play Share Live. Each week we bring you a live tutorial, demo, Q&A session, educational, edutainment time, all about different pottery techniques. And this week we have Drew Seymour from Clayscapes Pottery joining us. And he is going to talk to you about, well he's actually going to show you, how to mix up glazes and brushing on. And I guess my mic's not on. My mic's not the on. The backup mic was on. The backup mic was on. So thanks, Mike Guy. Thanks, Mike Tech. Thank you. Okay, now, now we can continue on. So if you missed it, we're going to be doing mixing glazes and brushing on glazes with Drew Seymour from Clayscapes Pottery. We are also giving away a $50 gift card to Clayscapes Pottery. To enter our giveaway, all you do is go to clayshare.com and sign up for our emails. That is how you are entered. Premium members of Clayshare, you are automatically entered always in all of our giveaways and you do not have to watch to win. We will email the winner and you will still get your prize even if you can't make it to the broadcast. Now, this is being recorded, so if you have to leave uh, or you know that you aren't going to be here, you can watch the replay later on. No worries about that. All right, so I have been working with Drew for many years now. He has been one of our first sponsors that came on with Clayshare. And as many of you know, I have a line of glazes with Drew. And Clayscapes themselves has a ton of glazes that are tried and true. So many different colors and surface qualities. They have everything you could want. You know, we've got celadons. They have these beautiful opaque glazes that are amazing on texture. I'll just show you a couple here. So this is my nutmeg and this is Clayscapes' is spruce blue and they are just lovely glazes, so easy to work with and you get so many fabulous options with them. So I'm excited for Drew showing us how to mix them. I already know how to do it, but it's always good to review, right? And then he's going to show us some brushing applications. So let's head on over to Syracuse, New York and check in with Drew Seymour at Clayscapes. Hey Drew. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Um, I'm going to be demoing some brushing glazes and how to mix up um, our Clayscapes glazes for brushing. It's actually pretty simple. Um, and yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask while I'm doing this. Um, I'm going to start out with a 25 ounce jar, just because this is what we have available here. Um, I sell these. Um, I think they're like $3 or something. Um, but I like these jars because they fit my sieve. Um, but we're not going to use the sieve today because we've got the power drill. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've pre-mixed some spruce blue and I'm going to show you how to mix our frosted mint. And then I'm going to demonstrate how I did uh, this effect here. Um, where I get the spruce and the frosted mint in like a crisscross pattern uh, over textured clay. Um, this is my first time demoing it, so bear with me. Um, oh, you're going to be great. <laughs> Drew's amazing. He knows what he's doing. And... Uh, I'm going to start with one pound of glaze. I've pre-measured that out because I know that it works. And we're going to put it in this, uh, in this little 25-ounce jar. And then, believe it or not, everything uh, everything fits in this jar. So what I do is I um, now I've got one pound of glaze in here. I've got my water, and I'm going to add 250 milliliters uh, on my graduated cylinder uh, of water to this. So we're just going to measure it. Boom. Right up to the top of my graduated cylinder. And then all of this fits right in here. That's it. And it's bubbling up. Um, I'm going to take the back end of my dirty paintbrush here and mix it up. Blow my spoke away so that I'm not getting any in my mouth or face or anything like that. And then once we're done, once I've kind of homogenized that enough, um, we're going to turn to the power drill. 
which has one of these little mixers on it. Okay, this is called a Jiffy mixer. Um, I want to say they're like thirteen to fifteen dollars. I find them really easy, especially if you've got a lot of pints, little jars lying around. Um, that you can just take this, stick it in, plug it. You know, that was what, 30 seconds. And if I put my thing in here, all my lumps are gone. You guys can see this come out it's over here. You know, it's nice and smooth. There's no, nothing. So fast. Nice and quick, right? Yeah. And then that's literally it. So one pound of, one pound of glaze, 250 milliliters of water, 30 seconds of drilling, and I'm ready to go. Um, I've got two glazes here. We're gonna start with the spruce just because that's been sitting for longer. Do you sell that Jiffy mixer at Clay Space? Yeah, we sell those. Yeah, we do. And and those we jars, do. are they leak proof? So if somebody spills- These are leak, well, yeah. So like right here, this is full of spruce blue glaze. And it's, I mean, I could squeeze it and it's not, that would suck if that happened, but uh, but yeah, they're leak proof. <laughs> they're leak proof. <laughs> and uh, I didn't mention at the beginning, and I should have for the month of November. You guys are doing a promo on Clayscapes glazes. You're doing free shipping. We are so this for the month of November for Clay for anyone Clayshare. Um, I think the code is CS eleven twenty three for uh, you know November twenty three. And, and that will get you free shipping on Playscapes Glazes. Um, and you don't you don't sieve when you're mixing up a a gallon a one pound of it, but on larger amounts, would you sieve? Yeah, you can sieve. And so there are certain glazes that have materials that really require you to sieve them, no matter what. Um, and so I, that's what I got the baby sieve here for. You know, I, if I wanted to, we could put this we could put this through a sieve real quick. Bum, 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 bum. So all of that fits. It's all. I mean, it's done. You know, I went and that's right just that an sieve. eighty mesh talisman test sieve. Do you sell that yeah, as this well? This is sixty mesh. This is sixty mesh. But a we 60? do sell. These. You got a sixty. Okay. But, I use an eighty because I like to torture myself. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it went right through. I mean, you can see it in here now. It's it's all ready to go um i didn't sieve this earlier or anything but you know like um you know some of the some of the new like the, some of the new glazes that i was working on they have really coarse ingredients in them there are some celadons that require sieving every once in a while um but yeah you know these for, for, for tonight we don't need to do no sieving because we got the power drill because you get the jiffy mixer do you use distilled water or do you use tap water? Um, no, nope, this is tap water. But if you want distilled, that's not a big deal. Um, it's not uh, required to use distilled water. Um, I just grabbed a bucket of water from the tap from the sink in the studio. There's a class going on in there. So that's why we're hanging out in the warehouse today. Um, so, yeah. And no I want to clarify just right on the water. free shipping. It's just U.S., correct? Not international. Yes. Okay. Just to uh, clarify. If you if you are international, I would say email me or call me and we'll work something out to where you'll get, you know, we'll do like Habsies on the shipping or something. That's still good. Yeah. So now that I've got my two glazes and they're ready to brush, um, I need to kind of understand what my purpose is here, because when I talk about brushing glaze on a piece, um, you know, most people think when they think brushing, they think paint, they think, um, you know, watercolor or acrylic or oil paints and how those spread nicely on canvas. Um, when we talk about Amico or Mako um, or Speedball, they have the brushing ingredients are already added in to make them um glide and smooth when you're brushing an application um those are all things that we are not going to be looking for today um these are dipping and pouring glazes that we have mixed to brush 
right? And so we need to know that they act a little differently when we apply them to our pots. Um, I expect them to, they're, they're not gonna go as far. So if I take a piece of amico and I brush and it has this nice big long um, brush stroke. And then if you were to take um, the spruce and brush it, you're gonna get a much shorter abrupt brush stroke because the clay is going to absorb that glaze much faster. And so what we're aiming for here is more of a laying down of the glaze where we're floating it off the end of the brush. And so I will play my own cameraman here. I'm going to scooch it down so you guys can see me. Make sure I do it like this. Ah. Can we see? There we go. You can see great. See, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a little dab. And you see that's not going very far, right? It's drying almost immediately. And so I have to keep going back and grabbing it. And now that I've got that dab, boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. right? this brush stroke dries out almost immediately. So in and a way so, it's like flooding the glaze. Yes. Like, you know, the flooding so this technique, is, that's this kind of what you're more doing of here. A, yeah, this is more of a, I'm taking it and I've got, I've got all this material that's in the brush that I'm really just kind of squeezing on there and then letting it stay where it's gonna go. And then when I get a little, when this happens, I don't worry about it. Because what's going to happen is then I'm going to come back in later and scrape that off. So you can see how I've got this little end of the brush that I scraped off there. So, you know, um, the, fl the flooding is really, that's a really good way to describe it because it's really just putting it in there and letting it um, sit and dry and then we'll go in and do more. I don't know if I'm in the screen, so I hopefully this is showing up yeah. well. You are in the screen, so. But um, but um, right, and so I'm just gonna. This is this is the demonstration. Here we go. Oh, I dripped. I dripped. That's okay. Right, and so then all of these are gonna be spruce, and then we'll go back in after these are dry and do the opposites in frosted mint. The brush and you're so, using, is that a hockey brush? This is a sim, mm -hmm. half inch, uh, like a hockey brush, yeah. And so they've got this small half inch brush um, that I like to use just because it matched kind of the, uh, the width of these carvings that I do. And I found that that worked really well. Um, the other brush that I have used in the past is the, um, the mop, the Mako number no. four fan brush. Um, that also works really well for this type of, uh, layering it, kind of laying in and flooding, uh, effect well, well and this is it right i'm not going to do more than this one coat on here um so uh, that's another thing that's going to be different from your typical brushing experience where you have to put three or four coats on um th i these glazes i've picked because they are matte and they're gonna show the texture really well through. Um, and I only have to put one coat on because we wanna, I wanna, I wanna show that action uh, of the texture through the piece. And this piece I also pre-waxed. So Would you tell us how you get... you got your texture on your pot, on your cup there? 
Yeah. So these, this texture is hand carved. So I use a diamond core um, carving tools. And so each one of these little rivets is one swipe of that carving tool where I go through and do that. And so basically I throw the, throw the piece. It's, you know, the blank is what I would call it. And then I completely remove the entire surface um, of this piece uh, once, one swipe at a time. Oh, look at that piece. I'm a little mess. Missed that little guy right there. Do, 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 do. So, um, so yeah, these, these are just carved by hand. Um, and then layered and right. So we're not, again, I'm not like, we're not trying to spread this real far because it wouldn't spread real far to begin with. Um, and so, yeah. And then the, the, I could show you what they look like at the end, put this over here. And so this is what they look like when it's all said and done. And because they're dip and pour glazes that you're actually brushing on, you only really need one coat. You do not have to go back and do right. two and, and so three coats. That's, that's one of the main, um, perks is again I, I only need this one coat to get this now there are other you know if i was going to do starry night for example um that glaze requires two coats in order to produce the tea dust effect and so you know i may need to do a double coat of that but i didn't pick that glaze because i it would sh it would obscure the texture uh, a little bit too much in my opinion and so that's why i kind of like the mats the nutmeg the um the cobblestone the spearmint would be really good for this um i've done lake blue uh with coastal blue as well um and again it's all just one coat one coat that's it easy and then you know after I'm done, we've got to go through and clean up all of these edges like this. And just scrape those all out. And that way they're not uh, looking all sloppy on the finished piece. So. So, yeah, I think the sound doing... effects are what makes the glaze look so good, though, Drew. I got to tell I... you. <laughs> Do the sound My effects while you're glazing. It was just me in a corner going, dur, 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 you know, <laughs> making all kinds of weird noises. Um, I like the sound effects. I, it keeps me entertained <laughs> while I'm doing it. Uh, I talk to myself a lot when I'm doing it. Um, but oh, we've only got one more row and then we'll switch over to the frosted mint. And once we switch over to the frosted mint, it'll go a little faster because we've already done the hard part, which is layering these in. Because then and once like the how frosted mint goes in, go ahead. Oh, I like how you said that you're really just floating the glaze on the surface, you know, so when you're brushing it on, it's not like paint, you know, you're not trying to right. shove it in. You're just kind you know, of floating it along. And I'm barely touching. I'm barely touching the brush to the pot. And so what winds up happening is we'll clean that out. Is I'm basically taking this brush and just ever so slightly touching it kind of near the pot and all the glaze that's on there wants to run to the ceramic because the ceramic is trying to suck up all the moisture, right? And so it's going to run off your piece. Let's see, we got to mix this up. And if know. you were working on a bigger piece, if it had the same carved texture, 
you would still apply the glaze this way. The reason yeah, you're applying this, this is, is because I would still apply it this way for these textures. Um, you know, uh, next week we'll do um, some dipping and pouring technique where we'll show some. Um, I have some different brushing uh, applications for dipping and pouring accents, as well as maybe some squirt bottles. Um, but for these, this texture, um, really the laying in of the glaze. Am I in there? Yeah, okay. And so this just, hi -ya. You know, and we went over a little bit. We don't worry about that. And we just floated in. So I'm just barely touching this and the glaze wants to just kind of like freely come off the brush. And I'm holding all of these all upright because if I move it, right, like if I were to hold this at an angle and brush it, that would all run down, right? So I'm holding it upright like this. So it doesn't do that. Yeah. And a lot of what makes this work is the brush because it holds a lot of material. There's a lot of glaze in that brush. Yeah, look at, I mean, this right, this this whole area right here, I mean, it's like just, a me, just me touching that that second time and pulling it back again is going to make it act like a second coat of glaze. And so it's in this nice thick pool uh, of glaze that is running off the brush is what we're aiming for. Just like that. that. Oh, and you know, I didn't clean it, so we gotta go back and clean it. Good enough for that, Ro. Boom, boom. But you know, I really wanted to just like show off that it's really, it's not super difficult. Um, you know, you don't have to be super scientific with how much water you're using. You don't need to add you don't always need to add like a brushing medium or uh, Epsom salts or anything like that. You know, it's, it's doable as is, and it just takes a little bit of, just a little bit of practice and, and paying attention to the glaze and how it's acting on the piece so that you're not rushing. That's all. Yeah. What kinds of questions do people have while I so, finish this pop-up? Yeah, if you guys have questions, please ask them. That's why Drew's here. It's definitely a QA. and a I know the piece you're doing is a highly textured piece, and you're doing a very detailed glaze technique. So if you were doing a piece, like say that was just a smooth-sided cup, mm -hmm. and you wanted to and brush on glaze... Smooth. Yeah, well, or, or what still, would you do? You're still only going to get so far with your brush, right? And so, you know, you're going to get an inch or two. Let's see how many of these I can glaze before it. Yeah, so when I get to this third square here, it's really sucking up a lot of glaze. And so I'm going to need to get that more on there. Um, so, you know, you're, with these, with brushing with these types of glazes, you know, you're only going to get, a good inch and a half, two inches before you're going to have to revisit your your glaze in the pot over here. Watch out. So if you were brushing on a surface that was smooth, you would see where the brush stroke started and stopped for each yes. different one. So you would just work that into the design if you were applying your glaze this way. Mm -hmm. uh, or would you ever dip something like this, something with this texture, instead yeah. of brushing it on? Do you dip and pour? I've dipped. So I do have some uh, examples of ones where I've just dipped them. This can be really time consuming, especially if I'm using like a, like if I'm using my needle tool, what's it called? My dental tool. Um, and really you know, getting persnickety with my, uh, where I've gone over um, and cleaning out there. And so sometimes I just don't want to be bothered with all of the tiny little applications of glaze. 
Um, and so that really is just picking of different glaze, right? So I've got, you know, coastal blue or any of the new wildflower celadons where I can go, um, you know, I would glaze the inside of my piece just like this. And then I would hold it like this upside down bloop, and dip it in my pot in my uh in my glaze bucket and we'll definitely be doing some dipping and pouring demos uh next week where i'll sh show that kind of in depth um and how do i do that um, so we've got a lot of questions coming because we asked for yeah, them yeah we like them <laughs> so this person's having problems with crawling with the glazes any ideas why sure so crawling can happen for a number of reasons um, the main reason I would check first is that the glaze is too thick. Either it's too thick in the bucket or it's too thick of an application. Um, there are some glazes that will crawl if you have too much glaze on. And I know um, like cream, for example, um, it has to be really super, super thick for cream to crawl, but it will do it if it's too thick. And so the first thing I would check would be thickness in the bucket. Um, other than that, there are a couple of different reasons that'll, that'll give you a crawl. If there's dust on your piece, if you've got like old work um, that you've decided to, to brush off and, and finally glaze after all those years of it sitting, um, dusty surfaces can leave crawling. Um, the other thing that can do it is hand sanitizer. So if you've got a lot of hand sanitizer or if you just went and did hand sanitizer on your, um, you know, before you touched your pieces, those oils and the hand sanitizer can actually, um, get sucked into the pot and those can also produce crawling. So do what. you need to mix your glaze as you're doing your project if it settles? Um, if it settles, but this stuff here, you just swirl it up good. with your brush a little bit. And yeah. then... every, every time I go over here, I'm kind of giving it a little stir. Um, it doesn't settle too bad over the course of a few minutes like this. Um, but yeah, you know, you always want to make sure you've got it nice and mixed. And then uh, kind of leading on to that is that after you initially mix up the glaze and say it's been sitting for a couple of days and you come back to use it, how should someone mix it up again? Should they shake it, stir it, or yeah. use a blender? So for me, if I've got uh, one of these guys, one of these bottles here, the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to shake the crap out, right? And so I come back to it after a few weeks. It's watertight. I'm going to shake it up, open it, and if it's thick in the if it's if it's thick in there i'm going to add a little bit of water um but for the most part you know the you're, you're just going to be able to shake it up and go and can folks oh, buy yeah. One, a two. pound of glazes or do they you only can get them by the five pound amount? they only come by the five pound quantity yeah we don't sell them by the pound so this would be a case where you would take your five pound um quantity and you know just keep a little bit out put it to the side um you can also you know just take it straight out of the bucket if you mixed it already for dipping and pouring you know you could just put it in a small container and you know this technique would work just the same um if you take it straight out of the bucket as as uh if you didn't so that's exactly what I do. I get five pounds, I mix up a bucket, and then I portion some out into a separate jar. And it works really well because then I have some for dipping and then I have some for brushing. So I get both. I get everything. Mm -hmm. And you can do that. Hey, yeah. Get in there. Wow. Wow. So will these glazes run into each other or are they super stable like celadons? Well, so they're pretty stable. For example, um, the, I, this is the exact same technique that I've used for this. Um, you can see that 
they don't really they didn't really mix you know there's a spot right here cha -cha -cha, if you can see it where they like overlapped a little bit um i i picked these glazes because they're matte because they're not gonna run um and they're again gonna show off that clay underneath um and so it's i'm not really looking for like this perfect um mega solid block of color you know i'm i'm looking for a thinner application that the clay is going to um is going to show through and and kind of give us an idea of what's underneath here's a good question this person's running out low on jess's chun in the bucket mm -hmm. what's the best way to use up the last bits of it should they brush it pour it or um any other suggestions you can brush it i definitely think brushing it is going to give you the most right like if you're going to use the absolute last of it um you know putting it into a smaller container to brush it um depending on the work that you're making you may put it in a smaller container and that'll allow you to dip you know like you don't need a huge container to dip you know something like this in and so something smaller and narrower um will allow that um pouring is the most messy of uh, in my opinion and so if you're going to pour you also have to have something that's going to catch all that glaze and so i find that pouring is you're going to you're going to have the most waste with pouring oh there we go so here's a question um not necessarily about your glazes but this person owns a paint your own pottery studio and they use stroke and coats and they've had a few pieces come out of the kiln where the glaze flakes off like paint chips do you know why Ooh, yeah. this could be happening that is called shivering okay and that happens um that really only ever happens when there's a poor clay glaze fit and, and what's happening there is your clay body <clears throat> when we when you fire when you fire your pot it shrinks right it every, everybody knows that we've got shrinkage involved um and so what happens is your your pot shrinks and your glaze shrinks but if your if your clay body shrinks way more than your glaze it's going to leave these voids of air in between the clay and the glaze and those come off as like slivers or um or like sharp shards of uh of area will all come out as um as pottery shards because the it's not fitting the clay body um i would definitely talk to your local supplier and see what's going on there because you may be in a situation where you need new clay or new stroke and coats depending on batch numbers and things like that we only got one more row oh my gosh you've already you've already done it so if this person wants to know is it better to use a premix clear in certain situations they were told they should over stroke and coats and over under glazes um it's not necessarily better or worse right like you the the commercially made and commercially available clears have been tested on all of the like stroke and coats and um and under glazes and so you, you can be confident that that's going to work because it's been commercially tested right it's been tested by a big company who spent a lot of money to get all of those um you know ASTM or certified food safe um, all of those types of things. If you're looking to do what's just like the quickest and easiest, though, a dip, a dipping it in clear is there's nothing faster. Like it's you put on one thin coat. You don't have to brush it. You don't have to sit there and and do the brushing. You can just dip it and be done with it. Hey, look at that. That was quick. Wow. Quicker than I thought it was going to be. Um, so this person was asking, if you put a glaze on too thick in one coat, 
it tends to not fire well when flooding like you're doing now. Isn't there a problem with the firing? Um, so basically asking that the way you're putting the glaze yeah, on. Yeah, if you put, so if the way, if you were to put a commercial glaze, so take, say we took an Amico Blue Rutile, for example, the PC20, um, you know, this technique is not going to work with that glaze. Okay, because that glaze has been designed to be applied in a really thick, heavy coat, um, two to three coats uh, to get that color. Where th this is really our clayscapes glazes are designed to be one and done, right? And so that's why this works because they're dipping and pouring glazes that we're applying with the brush. Um, this is not a technique that I would use with like the Amico Celadon glazes because I, I wouldn't expect to get the same results. Um, as, but you could as, do it with my, with the wildflower Celadon. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I have, I've done it. I've got a tray here I'll show when, when, af, when at the end that was brushed on and it's just amazing what you can do with it. So, um, and we did that in the tutorials, but now, um, this person has been brushing on the wildflower celadons and been getting stripes and big spots that's not covered mm. completely. What is going on? Is it too thin, too thick? What's happening? It could be a little too thin. Um, again, when we're looking at a larger surface area, um, you're more likely to see those brush strokes. And so a second, a second thin coat might be worth it. Um, the, uh, I would also say that maybe you need to dip it and pour it. If you're getting brush strokes and you're not liking it, the, the wildflowers need to be one coat. Um, and so if you're too thin, you just don't want to go too thick with the wildflowers because we don't want them to shiver, not shiver, crawl. Um, to crawl. If they're too, yeah. just like with any glaze and they don't have to be thick. Now, um, do dipping glazes ever go bad? I have some in a bucket for over four years. Been sitting for over four years. They they don't go bad per se. They just require attention, right? Like they're going to need more attention. Um, you're going to have to, you know, it's possible that they're going to be hard panned or they're going to be settled out or they're going to be dry and you're going to have to reconstitute them. Um, but that's totally doable. You can reconstitute them. And is Clayscape's cream supposed to be applied thinly or thickly? Clayscape's cream, uh, one coat, nice and nice and thin. Um, if you again, if you apply it way too, if it's too thick, it's going to crawl, right? And so I like one coat. That's my kind of go-to, one coat for everything. Um, that's everything Clayscape's. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is there are any plans to make any of the JPP glazes in paints? Mm, not right now. Um, that's you know that's probably a down the road thing. We tried doing um, we tried selling our glazes in like jars, but in order to mix them wet, the amount of infrastructure that's required from a business point of view is a lot. The, the machinery is a lot of money <laughs> and we we're not there yet. So um, unfortunately, it's probably not going to be something that's on the books, at least for the next few years. Here's a good one. I just finished a project using Laguna Porcelain 5 and Amico mm -hmm. Zinc Free Clear and the clear crazed on all five panels. I've used both together before, and I'm wondering why it would happen on these pieces. I did scraffito on the panels with speedball underglaze. Crazing is was... like always gonna be a, a glaze fit issue. And so when you get a glaze fit issue like that, where you haven't gotten it in the past, I would go to the materials and figure out if anything has changed. Now, whether or not, so that's a, that's a, that's a conversation that you're gonna have to have, again, with your clay supplier um, to find out, you know, is there something that's changed in the clay body? Is there something that's changed in the glaze 
you know, due to supply chain issues. Um, I know that substitutions are pretty commonplace. And so it's not unheard of that you would get that if if there's been a material change. But that's the only reason it would do that. And I'd be interested to know if she's done this uh, with the clear on that clay without the speedball underglaze, because speedball underglaze is basically colored clay in liquid form. And when oh, you're yeah. putting that onto another clay surface, you're changing the clay body. You no longer have a porcelain, purely just that porcelain clay body. Now you have porcelain with a layer of another clay body on top. So it could be the glaze fit due to the speedball underglaze. So it could be. It could it, be. And it it all depends on whether, again, you know, you go back and find out if that material has changed, you know, Um, but it's, it's likely that that's the case. And so we have a question. Could you explain the difference between uh, shivering and crawling? Sure. So crawling is when, you know, I've got glaze on my piece here. And there's a big bare spot, for ex- for example, say there was a big bare spot here where you see the clay, um, the glaze has kind of run away from that spot on the clay and you get that bare clay spot. And that's crawling. Um, Seth Rogen does a lot of like really crawling up glazes that like pill and, and do like that really, um, really interesting crawling crawling effect shivering is almost like it's almost like if you were to get a sliver of um any kind of sliver but in this case it's glaze um it comes off in these really sharp long um spots where it and it doesn't happen until after the piece has been fired and it's sitting out and you'll hear it tink, 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 and you'll come over here and it will start shivering. Um, and so that happens when the process is all said and done. Crawling happens typically in the glaze firing. And so you'll open your kiln to uh, disappointing um, crawling effects, uh, whereas shivering will happen after it's all cooled and dry and out on the table. So this person has a bunch of clayscapes brushing glazes still in powder, not mixed up yet. How long will they last in the powder form? Oh, they'll last forever. Totally. Yeah. I mean, you're gonna, they're going to last a long time. <laughs> Use you're them. Good to go. Use them all. Right. Yeah. So um, here's a here's a question. What clays do you use there in the studio with the clayscapes clear that you haven't had any problems with crazing? This person at their studio is having some issues with crazing with the clayscapes clear. So we use mostly Laguna and Tucker clays in the studio here. Um, the, most of the students are using B-Mix, um, Laguna number 65 or 66. Um, for dark clays, it's either the 75 or the 90. Um, and then we've um, we've just started selling Tucker clay and um, the mid smooth stone spec and the smooth stones are both really popular. Um, we've had great success with all of those. Um, I haven't had any issues. The, the clear glaze was developed on porcelain. So we do have people that use it on the Laguna number 15 or 16 porcelains. Um, again, no problem there. Good to know. So if you have crawling on a piece, can it be reglazed and fired again? Mm, I always like to caution people from refiring because the answer is yes, but, right? And so anytime someone says, can I, you know, reglaze it and fire it again? You can, and it may solve your problem, but it's kind of a 50-50. Um, and so what the, the issue with reglazing a piece that's been all the way through the glaze process is that it's already vitrified. And so that, uh, that pot is no longer going to absorb the glaze the same way. And so as you just run into all kinds of 
weird things that happen if uh, if you're refiring. Um, you know, if but if you don't like it and you're like, yeah, I'm yeah, you don't like it, it, why not? It's just an experiment. Like, yeah, you can totally do it. Um, the chances are, uh, it fifty fifty, it's going to either do more of what it did before, um, or it'll solve the problem. But you know, it, that's up to you. You know, it's it's always whether or not you think it's worth uh, worth blazing and trying again. Here's an interesting question: Can you use Epsom salts as a brushing medium? You can use Epsom salts to help with like hard panning. I know that people have used them in the past. I don't like to add Epsom salts to my glazes just because they they change the chemical formula of the glaze. It's not a huge deal um, most of the time, but I just it's just one of those things that I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of Epsom salts. They don't do all that much that's not like a huge like magical oh this makes it so much easier like it's not the, it's not going to be the case is bmix still sold out or do you have some um i'm pretty sure it's sold out although i'm looking at a palette of it right now um <laughs> <laughs> well there you go hmm, it's sold out oh, but there's a whole palette of it sitting right here yeah I, Whoa, what does that mean? I would double check but i'm i'm fairly okay. certain that it's not an issue i mean i got it on my last truck so you think it's not sold out you think it's available or going to be available soon if not yeah i know that the big issue is the epk mine I and know. so yeah i think i think that what's happened is a lot of a lot of clay bodies have been substituted six tile for epk and that you know has you know mm. slight changes uh can can cause more headaches down the road and so but but uh as far as the b mix is concerned i i'm getting it whether or not that has epk or six tile in it i couldn't tell you um but i'm able to get oh, it's it. happening okay good so you got it so is the Jessica glaze, so my line of glaze is considered Clayscapes glazes, and do they get the free shipping? Heck yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Yes, my All glazes are Clayscapes glazes. Absolutely. <laughs> they're, uh, yes. So you they're can, part of the deal. They're, 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 we're part of the same family. <laughs> so you can get them. Uh, can you save a frozen glaze? Oh, man, it depends, right? Like, like if it's got lithium in it, it's hard um you know it depends on yeah you can save a frozen glaze yes it's totally savable and we have uh chiming in from mr don seymour saying that the clear crazing issue could be from the glaze being too thick the clear likes to be thinner. oh yeah yeah so that's yeah yeah your dad popping in hi don so good <laughs> to see you chiming in thinking of you all right. Any other questions before we wrap it up and do the giveaway? Oh, yeah. Giveaway. I know we're giving, we're giving it away. So with the frozen glaze, if your glaze freezes, mine have done it multiple times over the last few years. And uh, I've just sieved them again. And honestly, my spearmint has frozen and it's been fine once I sieved it. My Oribe, my cobblestone, yeah. like all my glazes that froze this past winter, I just sieved them again. And they were fine. And there and were fine. some, yeah, there was some, some hard bits that I sieved out and I just didn't, wasn't able to really reincorporate them and it didn't make a difference. I mean, it was hardly anything. Yeah. So, um, all right. So here's a question is delayed crazing a thing like crazing a year after the final glaze firing. That I would think would, uh, that's going to fall. So, so yes, that's a thing. Um, I would file that under dunting and that is definitely a clay body glaze fit issue. Um, a lot of times that will happen if, um, like if I glaze this piece here and I only glaze the inside and the rim, right. And then fired it, it's bare clay. Um, you know, so you'll come back a year later and all of a sudden there's crazing in there. Um, so, I mean, that is, that is a thing. Um, but it's pretty rare. It's pretty rare. Yeah, it, 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 ha I have a friend who he made a pot and 15 years later, 
the person who bought it brought it back to him at craze 15 years later oh, and they wow. wanted a new pot and <laughs> he was like what do i do do i give them a new pot it's been 15 years i you know so um that's a tough one yeah so that's a that that's a that's a hard call but uh let's see any other questions before we do the giveaway because i want to oh tracy ordered her first kiln from you and it's coming and she's so excited oh yeah Woo-hoo. very <laughs> exciting yeah if it, you guys we're not talking about kilns tonight but drew is the kiln guy like he's my kiln guy so if i need I a kiln, he's the guy about kilns. <laughs> just just a thing or two thousand a like all two. the things Yes, yeah, so definitely reach out to Drew uh, for kiln questions. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, Patty Studio froze. I know, I, I hear you, Patty. So sieve it and see if it happens. All right. So we're going to be back with you next week, Drew, and you're going yeah. to be doing more glazing. This time, you're going to be doing dipping and pouring glazes, and yes. you're going to be also different applications, so different ways to apply those dipping and pouring glazes. Yes, I'm going to show some different techniques. I'll bring more uh, pots with me than the one. Um, and we'll definitely have some fun uh, showing some different application techniques and um, and talking about the, the glazes. And so we'll have another glaze Q&A session. So if you have questions tonight and we didn't get to them, we'll do that next week as well. Bring, them, bring me your questions. <laughs> and also the end of the month, we're going to be doing a glaze Q&A and maybe firing Q&A too. We'll see what how much yeah. we have to cover. But um, yeah, do you have anything to leave us with before we say goodnight? Don't be afraid to just do it. Just do it. If you've been, got your glazes and they've been sitting and you're you're nervous to brush them, just just do it. Add some water and you, you'll you'll be okay. Go for it. Go for it. Give it give it a go. All right, Drew. Thank you so much for our fun glazing tutorial. Can't thank wait you. to see you next week for the dipping and pouring part and alternative glaze applications, which I love. I also want to um, remind you guys, you guys that Clayscapes that. Open House and Raku Day is coming up. That's the Saturday before Thanksgiving. I believe it's the, is it the 18th, Drew? The 18th of November. So if you are in the Syracuse area or within a four hour drive of Syracuse, consider going there on November 18th and spend the day with the folks at Clayscape. You can pick up some Clayscapes glazes, some Amico glazes, clay, whatever you need. You could raku fire a pot. I'm going to be there so you could see me. It would be really fun. Come hang out with us all. So write that on your calendar, November 18th. Uh, Kevin will be there too. I'll just throw that in. <laughs> All right. So Drew had mentioned, and I had mentioned that just putting your glaze in another container. Here I have mason jars. So I mix mine up in five gallon buckets, and then I just decant enough off into these jars. Now you could just put your pound into these and mix like Drew showed, but um, another option here, right? And then I did say I would show you some pieces where I brushed on the celadons, and I think we should definitely go to camera two for this because. These were all brushed on by hand, exactly like Drew was doing tonight from the jars that I have. And these are all the wildflower celadons brushed on one coat. And you can see we don't have any crawling, crazing, pinholing, nothing. They just look beautiful and they were easy to apply. I also did it on a mug, so you can do that on a vertical surface, brushing on a dip and pour glaze. We did tutorials on these. There's some Clayscapes cream happening running a little bit because I got heavy handed with it, but that's okay. Uh, so I have these out there. So if you haven't watched these yet, please check them out. Um, another alternative for brushing on the dip and pour glazes. All right, let's give away a $50 gift certificate. Now remember, Clayscapes is doing free shipping for the month of November with the code CS1123. International folks, well, you, you can't get free shipping, but reach out to Drew, email him and he will work something out with you. So be sure to do that. Okay, you ready to see who won the $50 gift card for tonight? We're gonna be giving one of these away next week and the week after too, or we're gonna do it all month long when Drew is here with us. So to enter the giveaways, you go to clayshare.com and sign up for the emails. If you have already done that, you're good to go. Premium members, you don't have to do anything. You are automatically entered. Okay, so tonight's winner, 
I have no drum roll, but we'll have a little pause, is Hannah Shaw. Congratulations, Hannah Shaw. You are going to get yourself a $50 gift card to use at Clayscapes Pottery. If you haven't checked out Clayscapes Pottery, you can go there in person. You can also check out their website, clayscapespottery.com. They have a whole bunch of things. We even have a clay share section where we have a bunch of things in there that um, we use a lot on ClayShare, so you have to be sure to check that out. Now, my premium members of ClayShare, you guys, this is the teapot. So this month, the challenge is teapots or tea sets, if you made a teapot already, because we talked about this on Monday. But we have, uh, I believe I have two wheel thrown teapot classes and two hand-built teapot classes currently. So now we're doing another one. So we'll have a third hand-built teapot class option and that's this guy right here so we're going to be making this next for my premium members if you're not a premium member you can sign up for our free trial and join and watch the class and i just want to show you glazed with my cobblestone and spearmint glaze actually this has to go to camera too you have to see it it's so beautiful it's just gorgeous so this is the glaze we're going to be doing eventually on that beautiful teapot so it will match this. But look how amazing the spearmint looks on top of the cobblestone and the cobblestone looks so good with texture. So if you love texture like I love texture, cobblestone might be a glaze that you want to check out. It's also amazing on dark clay. So this is B-Mix right here, but it's still fabulous on dark clay. So just a, another glaze for you to check out and add to your list. <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you so much for being here with me tonight. Next week, we'll be back with Drew again, and he's going to do more glazing. And if you have glazing questions or throughout the next week, if you think of something, write it down so you have it, and you can ask Drew when he's here with us next time. If you need to reach Drew, you can reach him at Clayscapes Pottery. His email is andrew at clayscapespottery.com, correct? Yes? He's still in my ear. That's correct. All right. Thank you for being here, everybody. Take care. Be well. And as always, make